What's up guys, in today's fire breakdown, we are going over a basic house fire. Now this not, might not be as exciting as an explosive car fire or anything like that, but there are some things you need to consider when you show up on your standard house fire. Now, there's some things that happen in this that are pretty good teaching moments, things that I wanna point out, but also this video comes from 90210 Firebuff. His channel is awesome. He has some really, really good footage from fires out there. I will put the link to the original video in the description below, so be sure to check out his channel and consider subscribing to his channel as well. Let's get started. So I have to stop it right there. The first thing I wanna point out is you notice as this engine is coming down the road, both, it looks like there are a ton of cars on the street. If you're a pump operator or any sort of apparatus operator really, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to consider when you show up on a scene is you need to find your water supply. What that means is you need to find the closest hydrant, where are you gonna hook that? That's your job to get water to the firefighters on the inside or, or outside, depending on what the fire's like. So as you're pulling up, you need to be scanning everywhere to figure out where the closest water supply is, maybe is this hydrant. For example, where I work, we have different types of hydrants where some will only have two and a half inch connections, others will have five inch connections. Um, you need to pay attention to that so you know what sort of supply line you're gonna be pulling if you do need to get a water supply. Obviously, you just saw a brief glimpse of the fire right there. He's probably, he or she, whoever the pump operator is, is definitely going to need to get a water supply for this. So be aware of that. The second thing is, you saw that car just kind of slowly creep along. Man, is that the case? When people hear sirens or see some sort of traumatic fire or accident or something like that, people all of a sudden get rubber necks. They want to go really, really slow, turn and watch and see what's going on. If you're a driver and you're watching this and you have nothing to do with fire service and you see something, you see a truck coming or an ambulance coming, get out of the way. Uh, there's, a, there's a picture, and I'll try and pull it up here on the screen, of some firefighters broke out somebody's window that was parked on the side of the, uh, on the, side of the road to get to a water supply. If that's your car, do not park in front of hydrants. If you're driving, do not stop and slow down, especially if you see trucks coming. Get out of the way. Let them get to work. Let's keep going. So some people will watch what that firefighter was just doing, laying out that hose properly and say, well, what's he doing? He needs to hurry up and get water on the fire. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Especially when you look at a yard like this where it's all fenced in and the quarters are pretty tight, it is so important to make sure that your hose is laid out properly before you charge it with water. If that hose is just a pile of spaghetti all knotted up and you charge it with water, I mean, hopefully it works out, but a lot of times when it gets charged like that, it is so difficult to move and untangle. You need to make sure that it's laid out properly before you charge it and before you start going in. The last thing you want is to be in a fire and something's improperly laid out and that hose kinks and you're in the middle of a fire and all of a sudden you lose your water supply. So it might look like he's just doing something, just kind of throwing hose around, but that is very, very important. That's a very underrated thing that doesn't happen nearly well enough, often enough, on a fire ground. Let's keep going.
So you hear that sound. If you're unfamiliar with the fire service or firefighting tools in general, this is a K-12 saw. They're using it to cut the bars off the window. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not familiar with whatever this neighborhood is, um, but it looks like there's a lot of bars on these windows in a residential home. I don't know if this is a rough neighborhood, um, but they're doing that for multiple reasons. Number one, if there's somebody that's in there, it's gonna be difficult for them to get out. But number two, if, our, if firefighters are going in there and something goes wrong and they need to get out, they need to be able to escape too after they're in there fighting the fire. I'm assuming there's nobody in this house right now. Um, it looks like part of the house isn't that burned, but the other house, the other section of the house is was rolling pretty good. Um, the other thing that they're going to be doing is they're going to be taking those those bars off so it's easier for them to vent. At some point, you'll see a little bit later, they're actually venting this house with a fan. Um, I'm assuming they probably took those windows out to get it vented. I don't really know. Can't really see in this video, but that's what they're doing right now. They're trying to get those bars off those windows. So I want to point this out too. What this guy is doing right now is he has a pike pole and he's hitting the ceiling. The reason he's doing that is he's checking if the fire has extended into the attic. I can't, I didn't catch, I don't remember right now if this is a two-story home. I don't, I don't think it is. They're getting ready to put firefighters on the roof. And so he needs to be poking holes to see if there's fire up there before they put somebody up there and they're standing on top of that. They wanna know what's up there. The other thing is, is you don't wanna start pulling ceiling and then all of a sudden you're in there and the ceiling collapses on top of you. So you see him with this pike pole hitting the ceiling really hard. That's what he's checking for. So the other thing I want to point out, and I, I'm sorry I keep stopping this so much, but there's a lot going on and I want to make sure I explain it thoroughly to everybody. You saw these firefighters coming up on the roof and they have their tools and they were hitting the roof before they stepped onto the roof. There's a viral video out there um, of a firefighter walking along a roof who falls in and you see flames shoot out the top. I believe he was a captain in Fresno, if I remember correctly. This is what you're supposed to do before you go onto any roof. You're using that to sound the roof, to check for any weak spots, soft spots, or anything like that. You're supposed to be hitting the roof as you walk because if there's a soft spot, obviously you'd rather hit it with your tool and let your tool fall through rather than you step onto it and you fall through. If you're on a roof and at any point you feel as though that roof's starting to get real spongy or it's getting some real soft spots, it might be a good idea to back out of there. Um, there are a lot of videos out there of firefighters on roofs either falling off of roofs, but even more scary, falling through the roof and landing in the fire. You certainly don't want to be in that situation, but you see people walking on these roofs, pounding on it really hard. That's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to sound the floor. It's the same thing if you're familiar with the expression VES or VEIS, uh, vent enter search or vent enter isolate search before you go into that window you want to be sounding the floor so you don't crawl into a window and go right onto a soft spot in the floor and fall right through that's what they're doing they're sounding the floor to make sure they're safe and what they're walking on is going to be stable So I want to stop this right here and I'm, I want to stop this because I'm not that familiar with this where I live and work in the greater Cleveland area. It is cloudy and gray quite a bit, but it looks like, and I'll, I'll mark it on here on the video. It looks like there is a, there are solar panels on the top of this, on the roof of this home. I'm not that familiar with solar powered homes or anything like that. So if there's anybody out West or lives in a state that it's sunny and you have a lot of that. Throw something in the comments below and talk about some of the dangers. I've heard that some of the dangers that firefighters have a hard time shutting off power uh, to homes that are solar powered like that or are augmented with solar power. I'm not familiar with it. I've never actually fought a fire 
in a house with solar panels on the roof. So I'm not familiar. So if you do know, if you do know something about that, definitely throw it in the comments below and I will make sure that I pin it or something to give people good information about solar powered homes. So it looks like this video skipped around a little bit. Uh, I'm assuming at this point most of the fire is out, but this is the beginning of what they call overhaul. If you're not familiar with what overhaul is, it's the least fun part of firefighting. Um, after the fire's out, what you have to do is you have to go through and you have to pull a lot of drywall, make sure that there's no fire hiding back in some of those uh, spaces. You gotta look up in the attic. You pretty much have to pull everything out and take care of any hot spots because the last thing you want to do is you want to leave the scene and then somehow that fire rekindles itself and then you're going back for a second time for another fire at the exact same place. So this is the beginning of overhaul. Uh, you'll see them going around just little flames popping up here and there and they'll just hit them as they go through. So you see them with that giant gas powered fan at the front door. Essentially all they're trying to do is force all of that smoke out of that house so that they can get a better look at everything. Um, one thing, if you're ever vending a house, make sure that you always have a charged hand line in there. And by charged, I mean there is water in the line ready to go. If for some reason you missed a hot spot, as soon as you start forcing all that air through there, it's going to kick that up. Make sure that you have a charged hand line in there to put that out really quick. Uh, but that's essentially what they're doing. And for the purposes of this video, we're all done. Um, but really, really, really good job. I think, th I don't know if this was LA City or LA County that did this. Uh, very aggressive attack, very coordinated with their, with, uh, with their ventilation as well as their fire attack. Great job by them. As always, I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.